Well, good Sunday evening, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So here we are. It is Sunday evening. I hope you're having a great holiday weekend. And please make sure you thank a veteran if you see him. And ultimately remember what this weekend is about, which is about those who have made the ultimate sacrifice for all of us. So um, we had a great live stream tonight with, um, you know, with the call shows. I actually got to really begin to love doing the call-in shows it's so nice to actually put a face to all of the great fans that we have and so on um and have conversations about the cowboys because i get tired of just talking all the time it's nice to listen for a change and tonight um you know, the topics basically were have the dallas cowboys really fallen that far off and we went through the whole position battles versus everybody else in our division and we were looking at quarterback, of course, tight end, offensive line, wide receivers, linebackers, defensive line, the whole gambit. And to be honest, I mean, now, again, I'm going to be probably shaded because I'm a Dallas Cowboy homer. But we didn't see any positions where Washington, um, except maybe edge rushers or the Giants, were better than the Eagles or the Cowboys. And I looked at positions and I say, better group of running backs. The Cowboys have them. I looked at uh, quarterback. The Cowboys have the best quarterback. And I know Eagle fans will say that Jalen Hurts is. But until you throw more than 16 touchdown passes in a season, I'm not going to give you that one at all. I, I will say that the Eagles have a better offensive line right now. Um, I will say that right now I think the defensive line of the Eagles may be better than the Cowboys. But depending on how they play... The Cowboys may have a better defensive line before it's all said and done. And I would say that we have the best wide receiver in the division. I will say that we have the biggest playmaker in Micah Parsons. And I definitely will say we have a better secondary than the Eagles. But be that as it may, be that as it may, the thing that could really change everything, change the whole narrative of the Dallas Cowboys offseason, and I have to give credit to this, to Brian Green. Shout out to Brian Green, who will be here. Well, no, he won't be here. We should be actually in Dallas because he's going to be going down with us in two weeks to Stuart Morse's house to do some work uh, to help him and his mother out and things. Um, and we're going to have a lot of great conversations going up and down the road together. So I look forward to this, as well as seeing Dave, Randy Sykes and his son and uh, Mark Torres and stuff. We're going to be down there doing the right thing and having fun at the same time. And you guys will be able to follow along and be part of it as well. But it was Brian Green who said he's scared, but not, not scared, but kind of apprehensive about June 1st. See, June 1st, in a couple of days, the Dallas Cowboys will get an additional $10 million. Currently, the Dallas Cowboys have $13.397 million with another 10, basically giving them $23.5 million. I know most people will think, well, that's not a whole lot of money, but the way you do contracts is um, usually kicking the can down the road. And down the road, the road is going to get really wide. We're going to go from a country road to a giant interstate, you know, like those ones in Dallas where they're like, you know, six lanes across and stuff. The salary cap's going to blow up. And so I remember Jerry Jones saying, you know, if it was about winning the Super Bowl and all I had to do was write a check, I'd write a check. Well, technically, you could write a check. And maybe have a damn good chance of doing just that. You know, we've seen the Eagles sign, you know, A.J. Brown. All of a sudden, oh, they're a great team and everything else. And, you know, they make a few moves here and get Bradbury, who used to get toasted on a regular by C.D. Lamb. And all of a sudden, they're the greatest thing since, you know, sliced bread. But what if the Dallas Cowboys, who have not spent money in free agency except signing their owns, and we've had players who have wanted to be here if they were saving it up for just one big-ass move. Stephen Jones says we're not finished in free agency. All right, so here's the conspiracy theory as we look here at Dak Prescott and Debo Samuels here together in Dallas. 
to see a basketball game. You know, I've been in love before. I'm in love now. You see that face right there? You see those eyes? That's the look of love. I'm telling you, that's the look of love. We know that Debo has said, I ain't coming back. We know Debo's not there at training camp, you know, for OTAs, although it's not mandatory. He definitely likes some different, you know, social media posts with him in Cowboys gear. Now, we do know that the Cowboys, we always get bitched out, okay, you know, punked out with people trying to get a new contract. But what if, what if the Cowboys turned the NFL upside down and made a move for Debo Samuels? And I know what you're going to say. Well, shit, we only have $23 million. Well, let's look at something here. Let's just look at this for a second. Now, I'm not going to say that Debo is worth Devontae Adams' money. I'm not going to say that. And unfortunately, the light, this is so bright, I apologize. Um, it's probably, let me flip the cameras, maybe that's a little bit better. Um, it kind of makes me fade out. But his cap number, a record-setting Devontae Adams contract, $8.1 million is his cap hit for this year. Next year, it's $30 million, and the year after, it's twenty-one. So you're looking at $60 million over three years. That, that's what, what we're looking at for Devontae Adams. Now, I don't think Debo Samuel's contract is that big, and we had already paid $20 million for Amari Cooper per year on an old contract, knowing that the number for the salary cap is going to blow up because the new money hasn't even started yet. Hasn't started yet at all. So what if you sign a contract that's less than that? What if you actually got Debo Samuels for about $7 million for the first year and, you know, say, 25 the second year? And then, say, 18 the third? What would be compensation that you would be willing to give up? Debo Samuels is young. He's a playmaker. He's dynamic. He's a guy that would definitely fit in with the Cowboys. He would definitely sell some jerseys. He would be a worthwhile investment that you'd have to look at. If you put a weapon like Debo Samuels with one Rain Dakota Prescott, um, knowing how he ran rough shot on my Dallas Cowboys, can I dare say that that would be a guy that you'd have to all of a sudden say the Dallas Cowboys could be a Super Bowl favorite from the NFC with that kind of firepower? And so, Jerry, if you were meaning what you say about writing a check to get a Super Bowl, that guy would be the one. And so, Brian, I'm giving you my conspiracy theory, or I'm, I'm using your conspiracy theory that the Dallas Cowboys, instead of spending money on Von Miller and you know Bobby Wagner or Zadier Smith or any of the other players out there that were aging veterans that go on the defense, that maybe, just maybe, they were waiting long enough to let the dust settle. You know, we know that people have made some moves before the draft. Well, the thing is, after the draft, conversation comes down to earth a little bit more. And if, if, if you believe that you are going to be a really good team, when you look at a first round draft pick, you should be looking at one that's in the 20s. If you honestly believe that he makes you a team that could go to the Super Bowl, now you're looking at a late first round pick, which you almost look at as a second. So would it be conceivable with the team that you have, knowing all of the young pieces that you have brought in, Knowing that you have been really, really good at undrafted rookie free agents and finding guys that are diamonds in the rough. Um, Marquez Bell, like for example, looks like he may end up being a, a lock on the roster. Um, the center that we have here may be undrafted rookie free agent, may be a guy who can give a run to Tyler Badish. Um, 
for the starting role. Definitely going to make him sweat. If you believe that you have great players right there and you just got rid of Amari Cooper, wouldn't it be conceivable to say, I'll spend a little bit more money for a guy who literally torched us, who doesn't shy away from big games, a guy who has never checked out, and a guy who really and truly wants to be here and fits your mantra? Hmm. If you could trade him for a first and a third, I don't know that you're going to be able to find a game player anywhere as good late in the first round as that guy. And I would make that move in a heartbeat. So that's what I got for you guys here. I, I came out here actually to shut this thing down, you know, my outdoor studio, which I truly do love because we've got all kinds of capabilities and stuff. And I need to uh, get out here and, you know, do some more stuff here with the outdoor studio because, you know, it's kind of cool to be outside here, the nice weather, the fish pond behind me, and, of course, you guys watching our conspiracy theories. And with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, and I'm going to go spend some more time with my beautiful wife and as always i want to say thank you all for watching oh danny what a danny don't I've... fumble it don't fumble it oh i just shut this thing don't fumble it Rasheed, let's go Rasheed, look you know you hold it hold it hold it hold it hold it Daniel Jones, 12 of 18, 150 yards, one TD. Bro, on a quiet day, like According to Rashid, they probably have a dominant quarterback. And I will see you guys uh, later. Peace out.